Welcome to Mystic Post TV, we invite you to subscribe, thank you. Hello everybody, good afternoon. Um, you know, dear friends of Mystic Post, um, Father Daniel, Maria and I are so excited to introduce to you today two amazing people who are working incredibly hard to bring to the big screen a Hollywood produced movie about Medjugorje. Uh, these two guests are Hollywood producer Holly Carney, say hello Holly, and uh, executive producer Ann Vucic. And, uh, okay. But before we get started, um, I'd like Father Daniel Maria Klimek to bless this talk, uh, if you wouldn't mind, Father. Absolutely. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Eternal Father, we thank you for this encounter. Thank you for the gift of Our Lady's apparitions in Medjugorje. Thank you for the gift of uh, producing a major motion picture that will reach millions. Thank you for Holly's work, for Anne's work. Lord, I ask for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon our conversation. Spirit of God, fill us with your grace, your empowerment, your wisdom. Mother Mary, we entrust this conversation to you as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you so much for that, uh, Father. Um, we're going to hear a lot about and get to know Holly and Anne. But before we get started, also, I just want to say a couple words about uh, Father Daniel Maria Klimek uh, before we get started. Uh, first of all, I'm so honored for him to be here today. We go way back. It's just a miracle. The paths we've been on, it's truly a miracle. So I want to thank Our Lady uh, for that. Um, Father Daniel is a internationally known Medjugorje expert. He's also, very importantly, the author of a brand new book called For the Love of Mary, which is right here now. So this is a wonderful book. I've read it and uh, it will change your life. and It'll certainly help you fall in love with Mary. Uh, a couple of other things I want you to know about Father Klimek. He's a Franciscan friar an assistant professor of theology at Franciscan University of Steubenville. He teaches uh, at the university's campus in Gaming, Austria. And, and so uh, he's got his master's degree from Yale Divinity School, and he got his PhD at Catholic University of America, and he did his dissertation on Medjugorje and the Supernatural, which was published by Oxford University Press and was the winner of the Faculty Award for Excellence in Scholarship so again, we're so honored to have Father Daniel Maria Klimek with us. And since he's the expert, uh, I think we're gonna, on the Medjugorje and so many other things, I think we're gonna let him, if, if he doesn't mind, sort of lead this uh, conversation um, about how, what Anne and Holly's plans are to bring this movie to, uh, to make it on a scale that, um, is large and reach everybody in America. Hollywood produced movie about Medjugorje is very exciting to even think about. So, Father, maybe you've thought about this, and if you want to start the conversation, ask them some questions, I think we just should get going here. Sure. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, so, such an honor to be here. Such an honor to be here with you, Anne and Holly and Steve, and the work that you're doing right now. Why don't we just begin with the most... Uh, uh, basic question, how did this begin? How did you, Anne and Holly, how did you two meet? How did the idea begin for a major motion picture about Medjugorje? I'm, I'm, we're curious to hear. Anne, you, you sure. want to tell how we, how we met? Well, um, first of all, the project was born uh, in the heart of one of the other producers on this project, um, a woman named Jennifer Tadlock. Um, so just to answer the question of how the project came to be, she it's a beautiful story really of how the Lord uses difficult things uh, to bring great good out of it. She had a daughter who was diagnosed with a, uh, a very serious medical condition. And as, the, as her daughter was going through the process of, of seeking treatment and um, healing, 
uh, the whole family really turned to prayer. And Jennifer, who's been in the, by the way, been in the Hollywood film industry for 30 years as a producer and a director. She's, so she spent her whole career uh, in Hollywood making movies. Um, she turned to prayer. She's a, you know, she was uh, born and raised Catholic, but uh, this condition of her daughters brought her deeper into the heart of the church and deeper into the heart of Our Lady. And she began to pray the rosary. And when her daughter was healed through medicine, it, you know, it wasn't a miraculous quote unquote healing. It was, but it was nevertheless a healing through the divine physician, um, through medicine. When her daughter was healed, Jennifer, what was born in Jennifer's heart was a desire of how can I say thank you to the Lord for healing my daughter, for bringing us back to the church, for bringing her back to the rosary. And that was where this idea was born. Oh my gosh, I want to make a movie about Medjugorje. That was, that was her thought about how to say thank you to the Lord for all the graces that had been received. And she knocked on the door of lots of people in Hollywood for like a year and a half about this project. Everybody said no. And then, Holly, why don't you take it over from here? <laughs> well, I will. I will. She, and then I'll tell how we met. But um, so then she knocked on my door through a mutual friend that was um, it said, you need to talk to Holly Carney. And when I got her email, I was um, super happy in my own lane doing what I was doing, working on a myriad of projects with Go Media Productions and working with Lucas Foster on an episodic, Constantine the Great kind of had a vision and where I was going. And I, I was just really happy where I was sitting and I didn't want another project. Um, and I also didn't want a project, a Marion project. I was kind of like, oh, I did my Marion movie. I did Fatima, you know, and I checked the box and I, I'm not interested in doing another. And so um, <clears throat> two days later after I said, this is great. So nice to meet you. I'm super slammed. Maybe we can meet, you know, a few months down the road when I'm not so busy. Um, she happens to go to my church. I had no idea, <laughs> but I'm sitting in the front row at Holy Mass at St. Elizabeth Seton in Carlsbad, and she and her husband recognized my husband, who's a former um, NFL uh, place kicker for many years. Oh, yeah. And they recognize, yeah. <laughs> What's that? No, I remember. Right, right. He's oh, a kicker. Yeah. yeah. He's a place kicker. And um, so her husband's in the sports industry, recognized my husband. She's like, that must be Holly Carney. Came over and this is kind of the miracle part of it, I think for me, um, when they stood before us, we we're still in, in the church. Uh, something came over me that I don't understand that had to have been the Lord in some way. <clears throat> and I had kind of a word of knowledge about her and I, I knew her. Like I, like as if I had known her since I was one year old mm -hmm. and I, I, I knew everything about her and I, it was a weird thing. And I said, I'll meet with you tomorrow. And um, I met with her in the afternoon the next day for a five hour meeting. And um, um, I called my auntie, who is my spiritual advisor and my everything. She's like a mom to me. And she leads a Bible study, 43 years, Women's Christian Fellowship. And she has had and come out and speak several times and twice in the last five years and 20 years ago and came out and spoke uh at a dear friends of a friend of mine's home and so my auntie said immediately well holly call ann music and i was like oh okay i'll call Anne. <laughs> and so i called ann and i said you know i'm just investigating i don't know if there's a there there but jennifer says we need to go there if we're going to make a movie about it and that's a really weird thing in itself because in Hollywood people get scripts all the time and make movies about places they've never been all the time I didn't go to Portugal until we were ready to film the movie for Fatima so it, it was just kind of like oh we have to go there like it was just like obey 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 I don't even know what I was obeying but it was just like okay we have to go there within three weeks of that meeting with Jennifer Tadlock um, we had our flights book, booked and we flew to Medjugorje oh. <laughs> it's a miracle. That's... It, it really was. We, re, it, we It really was a miracle because we just saw the hand of God moving this project forward. And it's just been picking up momentum ever since then. I mean, it's just it's just beautiful to see what the Lord is doing. Yeah. Can I ask a question? I'm going to jump in here. Um, you know, Daniel and I have watched um, and, and some of the some of the movies that have already been made and um, and they're wonderful. They're well done they they 
change people's lives are fantastic. Um, with based on the media and the movies you've seen, um, do you have a different direction that you're taking it to make it seem different? Um, because that's what I'm sort of, yeah. I'm exploring that path on my own. So I'm hoping you guys can uh, do something yes. magnificent. Yes, that's an, that's an outstanding question because that's something that um, is very important to us. Even when we flew out there within the time frame of just, you know, getting this, wrapping my arms around this and flying to Medjugorje, one of the things that I knew we had to do from my experience on, on the Fatima project was we had to have the support of the relevant church officials there, which is very key to what mm -hmm. we're doing. And that's where Anne comes in. And just real quickly mention the people that we met with, and then I'll yeah. go back to where I'm going. Yeah, you know that that just from personal perspective, I have to say that that really I really had such great respect when Holly said to me, "I can't make this movie. I won't make this movie unless we make it in collaboration and support with a support of the relevant church officials because we really want to be in right order with this. We really want to do this. Uh, we re really want this to be under the, the sort of the covering of the Holy Spirit and we, we needed to be in right order to do that. So I loved when she said that. And as it happened, the Lord just happened to open doors that I had connections with those relevant church officials. And so the people that we met with and got the support of, and, and not just the support, the wholehearted support, was the pastor of St. Jane Church in Medjugorje, Father Zvonimi Pavicic, or for those who can't say Zvonimi, Father Z, as we refer to him. Yeah. So Father Z had his support. The, the Franciscan the provincial minister of the Franciscan Order of Herzegovina, Father Jozo Gubesh, um, who I've known for 25 years, and uh, we met with him. He gave his wholehearted support. We met with the the um, apostolic visitor, the Vatican appointed uh, apostolic visitor to Medjugorje, Bishop Aldo Cavalli, um, who also gave his wholehearted support after we presented to each of the each of them what we wanted to do with this project, and then also, which I, you know in some ways was uh, maybe the most moving for us, we also met with Father Jozo Zovko, who those people who know and love Medjugorje will recognize that name, know that he was the original pastor of Medjugorje when the apparitions first began. He was the priest that was imprisoned and tortured because he refused to uh, deny the apparitions. He refused to put a stop to those events when he was you know, being pressured to by the communists of Yugoslavia. Beloved figure in Medjugorje, we had a meeting with him and it was beautiful. In that meeting with him, I think we all cried. Uh, he said to us, when we presented with to him what we wanted to do with this project, he said to us, our lady has been waiting for you to make this film. Mm -hmm. it, it was just beautiful. So we left Medjugorje in that first trip in September, knowing that we had the support of all the people that we, that we wanted. It was a sign for us, yes, go to the next step, keep going forward with this. And, but to specifically answer your question about what kind of movie is this gonna be? I wanted you mm -hmm. to understand yes. first, I had to get the relevant church officials endorsement um, support. And this is what I said to them, which I'm gonna share with everyone right here. And we've kind of kept it close to the vest, but for you, I'm gonna get fathers on. And nothing but the truth. <clears throat> when I met with each one with my team and Jennifer, my auntie was there as a spiritual covering and advisor and my daughter Kiki, who works in the film industry as well. I said, great team of all women, which surprised them. And I said this, we don't want to make a movie about the visionaries. We don't want to make a movie about the locutionists. We don't want to make a movie about the miracle of the sun or the cross lighting up or anything that sensationalizes our faith. We don't want to make another Lords, another Fatima. We don't want to speak to the Catholics, the Christians, the believers. We don't need to evangelize those that already believe. We want to make a movie for the global audience that will bring in everybody else to discover the grace that is flowing out of that land and the presence of God that is clearly evident there through Our Lady's visitations and messages and, and through um, her pointing everyone back to her son, Jesus. So every single person we met with, especially Archbishop Cavalli, 
I agree. You know, I, I agree. I agree. I agree. And they got so on board with the idea that really what's happening over there isn't that. What is bringing 50 million pilgrims over there? Not everyone has this incredible oh, moment of, oh, I was healed or that's not there's a lot of internal things going on or there's a lot of changes that may be subtle or some may dramatic uh father i'm preaching to the choir you'd know more especially writing a dissertation on medjugorje that's incredible i'd like to read it but um so so that's how that's the movement in which we are going and i also said this when that script is written which we're in the early development stages and that's what we're going to do next, Lucas will find that script writer to write the script and he's getting the vision in his head of what he, what the storyline is, what he thinks it is. And that's going to be confidential. Um, we will, when it's first written, let the people we just mentioned, give the notes, read it, give the notes and make sure it's still in line with what they're thinking, what we're thinking. And right now they love the, um, way in which we're going for this project for our lady. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah, I, I love that. Um, I love that emphasis, right? Where it's transcending any type of sensationalism, because sometimes even, even from a pure perspective, from a human perspective, it's easy to become a little infatuated with the wrong things, whether it's with mm -hmm. a visionary or perhaps some of the supernatural phenomena. But what is the truest message of Mechagoria? It is conversion it is encounter it is what the lord is doing in the human hearts it is the renewal of the mind and soul and coming back to the sacraments you know it's um i, I had a chance to go to medjugorje twice last year and the first time as a priest and um many priests have said to me in the past when you go and hear confessions in medjugorje um, it's going to be the big fish. It's going to be the powerful confessions. And I, I heard it so often, I thought to myself, maybe that's a little hyperbolic, but then I start hearing confessions. First person, Father, I haven't been to confession in 18 years. Next person, Father, I haven't been to confession in 15 years. And it just kept happening and happening and happening. And you realize this is a place where people change their lives. This is a place where people um, come back to God. This is a place where they um, experience the maternal beauty of our Holy Mother and are led by something so much richer. And to be able to capture that on film, that in itself probably isn't a uh, simple task. It probably has to be done in a very nuanced way. But I, I just want to uh, uh, really just uh, offer a commendation and affirmation just for, for that perspective in itself, because it's a perspective that really wants to capture the purity of Medjugorje, because sometimes the Medjugorje message can be distorted. It's been distorted. And it sounds like uh, what you're trying to do here, Holly and Anne, it's really try to capture the heart of Our Lady and what Medjugorje truly represents. Hey, amen. That's exactly what it is. You know, there's a lot of documentaries out there. There's a lot of books out there. There's a lot of material out there that tell the story of what happened there. And so that's why that's mm -hmm. not really what we're interested in. We're not telling, you know, we're not interested in saying on June 24th, 1981, Our Lady first appeared, you know, that's not the focus. The focus is on what is hap what happens in the hearts of people. What is God doing through the graces that are being poured out there? And as far as I know, I don't think anything like that has been done. And that's why that's so excited. What I do know for sure is that nothing like that has been done for a global audience. And that's what we're so excited about, you know, uh, being able to bring this message to a global audience and seeing what God does with that. You know, and I have yeah. to add that Lucas Foster makes action movies. I was so, just, yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's not like we're going to make this. Uh, it, yeah, it's going to be for, for the global audience. It's going to be, exciting and fun and action-packed and and everything that we're talking about will be there but not right not obvious it, hidden in plain sight right exactly holly because um as you're as we're discussing this that's the first thing that comes to my mind is is uh is it's a tough script to write i would think um if you get because the 
You know, I love the visionaries. The first video I ever saw of Mirjana, Mirjana, I was just like, what is this? It just, I saw it and I said, I've never seen anything like that in my life. And I just hit replay, 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 replay. I was far away from the church. I was just like, what is this? And I know that it's happened to other people who see, you know, so I know we don't want to talk about the visionaries here too much, but I know that some people who see those little videos changes their lives and change mine. And I know other people who've like, just, you just, it's just, you just, it's just this great big mystery. And as, as you try to discover the mystery, it just pulls you into her, Our Lady and ultimately back to the Catholic Church. So again, yeah, I'm fascinated by how, how Lucas Foster and the action movies fits into Medjugorje without all the things that you're talking about, right. like visionaries and supernatural. So, you know, very exciting. Let's, let's, let's talk about, let's talk about the visionaries for a second, because, um, when we first went over there in September, we got this resounding, yes, I support you. I support you from Visca, who wasn't able to meet with us because she's she's not feeling well. And she sent her husband, Mario. And it was so beautiful to meet him because I felt like the holiness that he shares in his marriage with the Holy Spirit in the middle, with his wife, whom the Blessed Mother loves, obviously, well, I, I believe she loves all of us, but especially um, in, in the way that she's blessed Visca with, I know she suffered, but with her presence. And so um, they gave us their first yes. Here's our, here's everything. We're here. We support you. We support you. And um, he spent hours with us answering questions. And so when we brought Lucas back in April, um, Mario met with Lucas and they sat, we sat and had lunch and, and Lucas just spent what a couple hours and just asking question after question, after question, after question, not the questions like we, you know, Catholics would ask it, completely different. He has a completely different, uh, world view and perspective, especially as a Jewish man coming from Hollywood. He has, he has pertinent questions that I think, uh, were helping him form, uh, the overall grasping the nature of what is going on in, in Medjugorje. And so I do believe that because Our Lady has appeared to the visionaries, um, it started there. They were the catalyst to the graces that are flowing out of the land now because they did they did say yes. And and from there, um, it, it's it's gone on. But anyways, I just want to say, um, I wanted to mention that because we do have Visca and Mario's uh, total support, and that's just a great blessing to us. Oh, yeah. Can I just jump in really quick with something here? Um, you know, we're, we've, we've mentioned that, you know, Lucas came on this trip with us. Um, we, the four of us who are here talking, we were talking before we started recording just about Lucas and about um, a little bit about, you know, his background. But there might be people listening who don't know who Lucas Foster is. Holly, would you maybe just say, just introduce him to, to the listeners so that they understand, you know, because part of what's really exciting about that is um, that this movie is being entrusted into your hands, who is, you know, who's a wonderful uh, producer and who's a faithful Catholic, and also into the hands of a visionary producer and prolific producer who's just got such an incredible track record. So could you just introduce sure. him to people so they know? Who sure, sure. Sure. So Lucas is a very unassuming, humble man. And if you ever see him on the streets, he's wearing a New York, what is it? Yeah, New York oh. Jets, I think, is it? Oh, I don't know. It's 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 some team. I don't yeah. even know if it's football. It could be baseball, right? New York. <laughs> I know it's New York. Right, right. It's a New York. He's from New York. And um, he's a, a humble, uh, wise man. Like he... he just can watch and know what's going on, that kind of gift. He calls it instincts. I call it discernment. He has a deep gift of discernment. He can read a room in two seconds and and say, oh, I have a movie. <laughs> so he has a lot of gifts. But his um, he has done a myriad of movies. You can Google him. He's done three billion in films, uh, Ford versus Ferrari, uh, Man on Fire, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, uh, Crimson Tide from uh, back in the day. His list goes on and on and on. He's done over 50 movies as a producer, obviously over 150, I think, uh, executive producer in different capacities. And um, he's, he's, he's a genius, in, in my opinion, with the way he see th sees things and the way he can put things together and, and um, the way he interacts with people. Always, always 
learning from others and and listening and and gathering information for the next best movie. Absolutely. Let me say one thing. Man on Fire. It's I think it's my son. My son's favorite movie. He's just yeah, everyone, everyone, yeah, everyone, every life. Zoom call. I have Lucas on with all these men. That's the first thing they all mentioned. Man on fire. I myself have seen it. Crazy. Well, you know what's funny about that movie is that when he met the owner of the IP, I'm probably not even going to tell the story completely correctly. You'll have to hear it from Lucas sometime. But um, he had the vision and the um, producer didn't, you know, he was a, Lucas was a younger guy, didn't pay him any attention and made the movie. It was made, you know, I think with Joe Pesci, Pesci I think. And, and so Lucas was like, this is not the movie. This is not the movie. And he was like the persistent widow in the Holy Scriptures. Right. And he kept bugging this guy until the guys were like, OK, make the movie you think you think it is. And that's how we got the man on fire that you saw today. And it is an amazing that kind of tells you, you know, if, if you give him time to let this incubate, he will he will get that masterpiece. It's very exciting to have this group of people who are giving themselves to making a great movie about Medjugorje. So, uh, but um, so De Father Dan, you do you, any other? Uh, you want to jump in there? And, and yeah, I was thinking, um, Holly, is it? Um is is it difficult this these days in uh hollywood culture to to make a major motion picture about such a religious and spiritual topic or the, or is there a new trend where there's more of an openness to that because that, that's so interesting that you know it's it's not the days of uh, song of bernadette where a <laughs> film about marian apparitions can be nominated at the oscars yeah. for best picture it almost seems like um it's become a very uh secularized industry so so in itself it, it seems like a bit of a novelty but, but but you've also made uh uh fatima and that's uh, that was such a beautiful work uh that perhaps opened the door a bit i i think that's an excellent question no i don't think hollywood's changed i don't think they like religious movies at all i think the world wants them i think mm -hmm. we're what we're, we're in a drought for god mm -hmm. i think our audience wants them I think the people want them. And now I, I think it's, I want to be very clear. We are not making a religious movie about Medjugorje, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. We are going to create a global picture that won't appeal to the religious audience. We want to appeal to the non-religious. Mm -hmm. And so that being said, um, I think even with Fatima, it was very difficult to find someone that wanted to distribute Fatima because it's religious. People don't want to touch it still. I don't think that that's changed. It's really hard. And I have to be honest, my journey into Hollywood the last 15 years, I, I journeyed into Hollywood because this is kind of a weird thing to say, but I was a no TV mom. <laughs> I, I didn't want my kids watching TV. They could watch a movie here and there, have a little DVD that I knew what was on it. But so they grew up, uh, I'm speaking especially about my two youngest, JD and Kiki, um, performing and making their own shows and plays and puppet shows and, and acting and videos and, and performing and they're on stage. And my dear friend ran a, a theater program called Dramantics and, um, they, Marguerite really had an impact on, um, casting them and this and that. So they were kind of pseudo discovered and we journeyed into Hollywood when they were 10 and 11. And when I started reading the sides that they were auditioning for, they were pretty bad. And I was like, but my kids want to do this. They loved it. They, they just wanted to act. They just loved it. And, and a lot of people would judge me and say, why would someone like you let your kids go to Hollywood? Because my husband and I are practicing devout Catholics and raised them in Catholic schools and did everything we were supposed to do to weave God into every aspect of our life. And my kids are very faithful. They love the Lord. Um, they do Bible studies. They're 23 and 24 now. And I just kept responding to people, well, God needs a platform there too. So when I journeyed into Hollywood, I, I kind of stayed in my lane, which I've been involved in charity works uh, here in San Diego for 30 years. And so that was kind of the um, arena, sorry, if you will. That was kind of, I, I started in the development 
to, to create and create um, projects that. that hey, Holly, we're having a, a technical difficulty. Yeah. Technical difficulty right now. John is on the screen. What is it? John's on the screen. There we go. Okay, there you go. Oh, okay. So I'll just, so you have to cut that. <laughs> so, anyways, I just so I journeyed into Hollywood in, in the area in which I knew uh, I could make a difference. And that was in development, you know, creating um, teams of, of solid people that could uh, bring a project to fruition um, in that development space. And th that being said, I don't feel like I hang out with Hollywood people. If you know what I mean? I don't. I, I, I kind of stay outside Hollywood and work with people who would like to make a difference based on the message or based on um, uh, just wanting to leave a lasting impact through the arts and, 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 and the culture in, in a different way. Does that and make I, sense? Yeah. And you yeah. know what, Holly, I'd like to ask you to speak on something too. Um, and that is that um, there may, you know, big studio out there probably is not interested in making movies like this, but we're, we are an indie project. And can you maybe explain why we are and what that means? And sure, um, sure. So, I think that's important um, to understand. Right. So indie films are independent film companies. There are many that are just, you know, a filmmaker or just, you know, make one or two movies. I ha happen to be a part of a production company out of Atlanta, Go Media Productions. And we, we do everything from uh, uh, pre-production to distribution all the way to the end. So um, we have to fundraise and raise our own development funds or, you know, debt financing or whatever it is, raise our own money in order to control our message and do what we want to do. Big studios um, that have all the money to just start a movie, they control the message and they control the project and we don't want anybody to control our message, but our team whom we trust. And so that's kind of the difference. You've got big studios and you can name them all day long. I don't want to give them any commercial time, but then you have the independent film companies and there are a lot of us and we're all out there trying to make a difference in, in our, in our own way. And it's, it's been, um, it's, it's been so interesting to see recently how, the Lord's been moving in Hollywood. So, you know, there was uh, more recently the case of the actor Shia LaBeouf uh, playing Padre Pio. And of course he was in such a dark place in his life, so much um, scandal, abuse, uh, promiscuity, other things. And to play Padre Pio, he, de he decided to uh, say yes to living with a group of capuchin friars and the lord eventually led him to a deeper conversion and now you have a um a-list actor talking with bishop baron speaking about his journey and i think that's reaching people more than a type of direct in your face religiosity message so i i, I like what you're doing here because uh, that emphasis on we're going to reach the wider public. This isn't. Uh, this isn't necessarily, you know, a film where it's pure flicks, where it's so overtly religious. But part of it is also what appeals to the human spirit. Because, as you said, Holly, even if Hollywood is uh, still not very pro God, uh, the world is hungry for God and there's a human longing, there's a yearning, there's an emptiness that isn't being fulfilled unless it is fulfilled by, by the Lord, by spirituality. So to be able to communicate that to a wider audience, um, um, it's, it's probably going to have a lot of effects, and it's, it's also probably going to lead to a lot of spiritual warfare. I'm sure there'll be struggles. There'll be difficulties. You've, you've probably already experienced it. All, <laughs> week, all, all week we've been in spiritual battles. And you know what? I just want to say to the audience or anyone that's listening regarding um, the Padre Pio movie, my my 24 year old son, JD, who uh, Notre Dame graduate teaches the teaches theology at St. Monica's in LA. He saw yeah. it. And um, th thank you. And he stayed for the entire movie. I know I haven't seen it yet, so I, I feel um, I should, probably shouldn't speak about it. But I want to say, why can't we embrace something different? 
why can't we go see the Padre Pio movie and not want it to be, oh, it has to be religious. Wait a second, why is life? How many saints do we study and know? What was it just St. Augustine? My husband and I were just talking about the other day. Um, how many years was he a big drinker and a partier and, and this and that and until he came to the Lord? I mean, why does the audience need to, I'm asking the questions, I'm sorry, but need to have a movie about Padre Pio be this religious thing that they thought, why can't it be, you know, the torment or the different things that he went through? My son, J.D., loved it and understood the layers to it. I think, and and we talked earlier, we were a little bit concerned. We don't want someone to do that to our movie, to go see this Medjugorje movie project and say, Oh, well, it wasn't about the visionaries or this or that. And so that's why we're like, well, we better start telling people that, that this isn't going to be a religious film because we want everyone, be, especially the Christian Catholic audience, be open to what these Christian producers or non-Christian producers are, are trying to show the, through the sufferings of some of these holy people. It's it's not like because you're holy, you're without trials. That's even scripture, right? Jesus said, there will be trials, but I will be there with you through them. So I, I don't know what you think about that, Father. Do you uh, kind of understand what I'm trying to say about? Yeah, yeah, I, I love it, Holly. I love it. You know, it's, um, I was, I was actually pleasantly surprised with the Padre Pio movie. I was, um, I say pleasantly surprised because I know that when you uh, look it up, there, there are a, a lot of negative reviews. Um, but even, even, um, even some of the reviews that, that say that it naturalizes him. I mean, it was a film that still showed him with a stigmata at the at the end. It showed him bilocating. It showed him praying over someone and receiving miraculous healing. So there was still that supernatural mystic dimension very strongly. But then as you're saying, how do we relate to the saints? We relate to the saints through their struggles, through the difficulties, through what they had to overcome. Satan was attacking him. Temptations were present. That becomes so real. I'm a Franciscan friar. It's an honor to see a picture where a Franciscan friar is depicted struggling internally, facing the devil, but also facing himself, facing his own issues. That's what connects us to them. And we realize that in the midst of that human struggle, they're able still to surrender to God, to persevere, to become men and women of great heroic virtue, not because they didn't struggle, but because they struggled and they were able to persevere in the race. So, so I, I was very, um, yeah, pleasantly surprised, truly. And, and I'm, I'm it, it also interesting, interesting. It's one of these films where when it depicts Padre Pio in his element, so to speak, it is him celebrating mass with such intensity lifting that host with such reverence and it's done with a type of solemn slowness that really admires the majestic quiet beauty of what is happening in that moment so i think there are a lot of subtle nuances that audiences who perhaps are looking for something um surface level are are missing so i agree with you i, I think that um I think that it shouldn't be overlooked for the good things that are present. Yeah. Wow. And I want to say when Lucas met with everybody in April, Anne had mentioned how Father Yozo Zako had said, the lady's been waiting for you. One by one, everyone that met with Lucas, every person that we named, Father Joe, uh, Father Svet, uh, Archbishop Cavalli, Father Yozo Zavko, every single one said, this is this is the producer. This is the one. Mm. This is the one our lady called. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Quite beautiful. And some of the priests were really funny. They're like, you know, there are two Jews in heaven, our lady and Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> and Edith Stein. <laughs> but they did say our lady is a, our lady is a, our lady is a Jewish mother and of she's course. calling she's calling her children she's calling all of us she's calling everybody 
you know, she wa she wants us all to say yes to the graces that God has for us. Amen. Yeah. Let me let me ask a question here, either for Ann or for for Holly. I don't want to put you on the spot, so you really don't have to answer the question. But um, you know, I I did my own. I did a book project, and and people would ask me, you know, what's your what's your elevated pitch? And man, I struggle with that. Um, and uh, so that's always on, you know, when you're doing these, uh, what you, what you all are doing, it, particularly when you start raising money, uh, which is a big part of all this is that, do you have a, are you willing to share an elevator pitch? You don't have to, I know you're, there's a lot of moving parts, but have you thought about that? Come on, Ann. Why don't you go for it. You don't have to answer. You don't have to answer. <laughs> okay. 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 I'll do this. I'll do this. I'll Not do easy. This. <laughs> the elevator pitch. We um, are excited to create a major motion picture about the graces flowing out of the land of Medjugorje. And it's going to be for a global audience. And it's going to be um, a message for all people. And our ambition is to inspire people to um, be open to what God is revealing through the mysteries that are happening in Medjugorje to be open to the supernatural because the um, spiritual realm is an unseen reality. And we are going to create a film that you won't even know that uh, the spiritual realities will be woven into this project so beautifully until you walk out and you'll be prompted to wanna to travel perhaps to Medjugorje or research more about it and discover individually the um, the reality of, of God. And so we are looking for private equity investors and donations and contributors. We're laughing, we're like, if 1 million people donated $100, we'd have the money to make this film like that. If people would just be generous to believe in the team that we've assembled to bring our ladies movie to the big screen in a new way, in a unique way, in an interesting way, um, and believe in that and support us monetarily, we can get this movie made in two years and in, in record time. But it's it's the drive and the development process of raising funds that takes takes the time to get the movie made. That That's all it is. And so we just want to appeal to everybody that has a heart to leave a lasting impact on the culture, to donate, contribute, invest, and help us get this project to the big screen. Was that three minutes? That was great. <laughs> that was great. I love I love the fact that your ambition and your sort of vision is not preached to the choir. You you really have a true focus on the entire world, all our ladies' children. And I think that's gonna be at the heart of what makes this movie interesting. And uh, it's a really ambitious and beautiful project. So, um, Anne, did you want to follow up on that? Um, say you can say whatever you want. Uh, fundraising. Uh, this is. Uh, you know, uh, well, I'll tell you. I, I don't know how I could follow up on those beautiful words that Holly said, um, other than to provide the information on how they can support us. Um, this is, you know, this is something that uh, we're passionate about. We see the hand of the Lord on this. We trust that all that we need to bring this project to fruition will be there. But as Holly said, we do need help. And we would love to have people join with us to be a part of our ladies' army to bring this message to the big screen. Big screen. And, you know, one of the things, um, you know, we for anybody who's followed Medjugorje for a long time, one of the beautiful things that happens there is people develop, uh, you know, Father Daniel, I'm sure you know this as well, people develop a passion when they leave there for for being, for bringing the message back home to wherever they are. And they, you know, we have an expression, sometimes we say they become a part of Our Lady's Army. And so we would love to invite anybody who's listening here to join us as part of Our Lady's Army to bring this message because we are in a battle. Uh, we really are in a battle for uh, for souls. And uh, I think if we can get this kind of programming available to the masses, Medjugorje is a place that touches people's hearts. Whether you want it to or not, when you're touched with the message of Our Lady, 
people's hearts are touched. I've seen that as somebody who's been taking pilgrims there for 25 years now. When people go there, when people hear the message of Medjugorje, hearts are touched. And we want to touch the hearts of a global audience with this message. We want to reach people who maybe would never set foot on an airplane to fly to Bosnia-Herzegovina to go to Medjugorje, who would never pick up a book about Medjugorje, who would never watch a, a documentary about Medjugorje, but who might want to watch a Lucas Foster production because of his reputation, and then we'll hear the story of what's happening there. So we would love to have people join us. Uh, there's a couple of ways to do that. We would love to have people email us. Um, Holly, correct me if I get to sure, sure. so, Go ahead. That, very well. So, um, Father, we need your prayer covering. We've had a spiritual battle all week. We have a team of amazing women that um, we have men too, but this part, <laughs> all the yeah. women uh, that we're, we're um, working on the sites where you can find us and um, had some difficulties. As you know, the battle is real, but there it's uh, you can find us at Medjug the No, no, the Medjugorje, Medjugorje Movie Project dot com you can also find us at my production company's website which is go media dot productions and Anne's family's website tecton ministries it's oh. dot org yeah tecton ministries dot org it's just t e k uh t e k t o n ministries dot org ministries dot org there's a landing page on there where you can reach out to us. And of course, just to keep it simple, um, met the Medjugorje movie project at gmail.com. Not the, the Medjugorje, not the, yes, Medjugorje, Medjugorje, Medjugorje movie project at gmail.com. And um, we'll just send information on the many ways you can help. We have a list of many ways you can help. For instance, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's where we're collecting all the stories people have when they've encountered Medjugorje, whether they've been there or not been there, but just have had encountered it in some way. We're collecting their stories on YouTube. We're collecting priests' stories. We have um, priests and, and just anyone that wants to give their testimonies. We just want to grow our YouTube channel, which is stories after stories about the graces that they've experienced in Medjugorje. And so we also have um, uh, uh, social media pages you can subscribe to. And donations, contributions, and or investments will respond to all of those. I personally will respond to those that are interested in, in, in investing. And um, the last thing that's really important for us is we do ask probably the most important thing for everyone to pray for us. You know, um, I always say when people complain about the priest in the Holy Mass or the homily, or I'm always like, did you pray for him today? So it's kind of like, if you want us to have this amazing movie, please cover us in prayer. Please pray for us. I mean, every single person watching this can at least do that. That would be amazing to have everyone storm the heavens with prayers or the Medjugorje movie project. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Yeah. Medjugorje uh, touches hearts, uh, you know, as you emphasize, and, you know, so many conversion so many vocations so many transformations and now you're working on a project that will touch millions of lives and so the enemy is not happy but that's a compliment when he attacks that's a big compliment uh, i love um holly although we just met i i know and I can see that you're a very spirit-filled woman. Mm -hmm. I love how at the beginning, when you're talking about uh, uh, the encounter in church, you said, I received a word of knowledge, you know, the Lord spoke. So I, I see that dimension in you, just a very woman, a woman who's in love with the Holy Spirit. So I feel that um, the Lord really has uh, a Joan of Arc here as a producer to, to lead this. And Anne, I know you have a beautiful spirit Spirituality, beautiful history with Medjugorje, uh, such an intimate history. You do so much for the church yourself. You do so much. I know with Father uh, Sudaj as well. So I, I think that he he's brought a team together. Um, um, the Lord's disciples here, Our Lady's disciples, disciples of the Immaculate Heart, um, who will who will do wonders. And part of it is uh, through the struggle, through the difficulties. We unite those difficulties with the cross and Jesus will bring his graces. And so, so many fruits will come from this project. So know of our prayers, know of our fasting, know that we're behind you. If you ever need a, 
emergency prayers, feel free to get in touch. Uh, the audience here for Mystic Post, I know Steve can always post and ask for more prayers, but you, we are behind you and you're doing great and important work. So thank you. Father, thank you. That was the third time in this hour you made me cry. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. We needed emergency Amen. prayer all week. <laughs> Coming in hot. <laughs> thank you, Father. Those Amen. Are beautiful, beautiful words. Thank you. And thank you, Absolutely. Stephen, for having us on. Thank you. Well, this has been this has been fantastic. And and uh boy, it's, an hour goes by fast. But are, are there any last things you uh, uh Holly or Ann want to say? I know you just sort of did your elevator pitch and talked about fundraising. Is there any anything else you want to say about your journey on trying to make this movie happen before we go here <laughs> okay it's okay i think we covered the bases i, don't I think know. we did and uh and so uh, there's some things that i'd like to talk about uh, when we get off this call and uh, so if you know if you could stick with us for a minute um i think we're uh i'll edit this out but i think we're uh um, ending this right now, and it's been just fascinating to get to know both of you, and great to see you, Father Daniel. So why don't we end this now, and uh, and let's have a, a chat for a second, because I, I have some ideas on maybe how I can help with uh, the fundraising. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for having so just... all of those that stayed this long listening. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to stop recording now. Okay. Okay.